as a footballer, you start saying to yourself, well, "What is this all about?" You know, I'm in England. I'm a, <laughs> I'm an England player, um, and you've got the whole, whole, the whole stadium ringing of monkey chants every time you touch the ball. It was, a, it was, it was a scary kind of confusing moment for me. It's an abuse, and you, you feel to yourself, "Well, I'm playing football, and I've never ever in my whole entire life up to then has received that." I'm I've received it with an odd player, a foreign player, uh, when I was playing international, but never on that level. In the book, quite a lot of the um, narrative is about the uh, the suggestion that you were gay. I mean, mm. it comes up again and again through the book. Mm. I just, as you look back on it, do you think there's anything you could have done to have dealt with it differently or better? You know, going into football, I would occasionally bring a girlfriend to one of my games as a youth team player. I didn't, but as time went on, I, I, as a footballer, I said to myself, you know what, I don't really want to bring someone every other month, there's a different girl. Uh, I, I wanted to respect my club more than that. You know, if I was married or, you know, a long-term girlfriend, it's a different story, but that wasn't the case. And I wanted to kind of keep it separate. But the trouble is, a lot of people are just really lazy watching and, 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 you mean if you're not bringing girls along, they make the lazy assumption that yeah, yeah, you must really fancy good. boys. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm just really, really shy. I just didn't want to... I wanted to respect my club. And when I'm at work, I wanted to kind of give my full attention to playing football. Did you... I mean, were there many other people like you in that category? Or was football completely dominated by that culture? Graham Lasso obviously had exactly the same problems, wasn't mm, he? I mean, you mm. know, I think he said words to the effect of... Uh, he, they thought he was gay because he read The Guardian or something like that. I mean, it's mm. just ridiculous. I mean, it's just so archaic the way you almost got a blueprint of a 1970s uh, footballer and that's it. And if it deviates from anywhere there, anywhere from that blueprint, that's it. You know, it's incredible. I mean, and it's still some of them still think like that. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. But there's an interesting episode in the book. You have lunch with Puma as a potential sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ask you outright, are you gay? And yeah. what happens? Well, basically, they, they, you know, I said, I'm not. And then, so, oof, you know. What a pity. See, yeah, see we you later. Wanted, yeah, we After wanted... the lunch, bang, go. <laughs> they wanted the edge. They wanted an edge. They, they said, want... well, you know, shame. He actually said, the shame you're not, because we wanted to be the first foot, gay footballer signed for Puma. It's just unbelievable. Well, <laughs> so, Contra just got out the door. And, we, uh, of course, one of the things that had happened shortly before that was your brother had mm. got into a fight yeah. with someone who yeah. who said you're gay yeah. Yeah. and yeah. then your brother had gone to jail yeah and that's you know that's when it starts affecting you you know that's when it starts affecting you and that's when you got to say what's going on gotta sort this out and people were just allowing it to happen it was it was it was sick it was sick kids kids in the stadium or they're singing and whatever they're doing and they, their own children were there listening to it it's like what the mentality is just scary and people just allowing it to happen. Yeah, whatever, it's football, onto the net, let's go home. No, it doesn't stop there.